Hey everyone, I'm Joel here with Dissecting DIY. We have a new logo, we have a new intro. Uh, welcome. So today we're actually going to go over how to clean and store water for long term, up to five years, using a part A and B kit. Uh, we have chosen the water 55 gallon water storage tank by Water Prepared. As you can see up here on the screen, they are stackable. We did obtain two of them, purchased ourselves. Uh, we are not sponsored by anybody as of yet. Um, something that we hope to change in the near future. Now, uh, why might you want to store water? Well, uh, things in the world are a little crazy. As you can see, the energy prices are a little bit nuts right now. Our electric bill went up 112%. That, <laughs> um, I've heard other people say theirs have gone up 55%, but normal bills are turning into three, $400 bills a month as opposed to $100, $200 bills. And it's they're talking about East Coast brownouts or blackouts for the winter. And of course, I wanna be able to have some water on hand. We do have solar and battery backup. Um, there is like the extreme cases like uh, China and Russia have threatened the United States with an EMP weapon. Now you've seen my EMP shield videos. You know that we try to protect against that. Um, just to explain to you what an EMP is, there are three types of EMPs or essentially parts of an EMP. Uh, there's an E1, E2, and E3 spike. The E1 and E2, the E1 happens in a nanosecond. The E2 happens in uh, about a second after. And then the E3 is sustained, and that's what comes along your, uh, essentially is, is, comes along the grid. So it's going to use the grid as an antenna, and then that can surge into your homes, and that's where the EMP shield really shines, uh, at least so they say. Uh, the E1, E2, most of your electronics probably power down, power back up. It will kill probably some electronics that aren't as protected. Anything with an antenna, um, any of the Wi-Fi will probably not work. So everyone thinks that they're the super secret squirrel science fiction out of James Bond type of weapon. All it is is a nuclear bomb detonated 250 to 300 miles above the intended target. And it just creates a surge of power. Um, again, E1, E2, nanosecond to a second, and then the E3 lasts up to eight hours. China and Russia have threatened to use such a weapon if the United States becomes a problem um, with China pushing to get into Taiwan for reunification and Russia trying to uh, deal with the problems in Ukraine that they're having. Uh, we, the, the world, I, I just don't trust it. So, you know, we're doing things to, the, the world's a rocky place right now. So I am recommending that you do something to Prepare yourself for at least, we'll say, 30 days um, to three months. You should have food, water, uh, and we're just <laughs> we're just starting to do that with some of these prices. And of course, um, you know, it probably won't get to to you know famine here in the United States, but other other places are going to get hit. So. Why do you want this? Well, again, the water storage part, we just went over that. Uh, it's, it can prepare it for up to five years. Today, we are gonna go over how to clean it with soap, clean it with bleach for sterilization, add well water, not city water. Um, city water, if you were to add it after the first two steps, you wouldn't need to treat necessarily again. You could with um, you know, some other compounds. But with well water, you, you need to treat it. And uh, that'll allow it for long-term storage. 55 gallons per person, uh, 55 gallons a day. I'm sorry, one gallon a day. So one gallon, one of these tanks could last me potentially 55 days. You know, whatever the size of your family is, you want to plan around that. And if you have two of them, 110 gallons, 110 days. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get into actually cleaning these out preparing them for storage. Uh, I would utilize a tray system because I hear that sometimes these leak or can leak. We're gonna try to protect you against that. I'm gonna show you what I did. I used some concrete cinder blocks to elevate the bottom one off the ground and as well as give it a solid base. Um, I also put a buffer sheet of paper. Um, it's actually layered paper. Uh, you know, I wanted something in case it got wet, it could dry out. 
and then of course I didn't want any type of if you know if the if it gets too hot in my basement or too cold or something like that where there's any type of off gassing from the concrete I didn't want that potentially to have direct contact with my barrel so we do offer uh, there's a bit of a buffer there and yeah uh, let's get into cleaning and preparing these for water storage I do utilize a double filter system. I have a paper filter for sediment, and then of course a um, carbon filter for taste and all that for the main house. It is hooked up to my hose. <laughs> the well guy hooked it up and yeah, it's connected. So then we added an RV filter just as a third line of defense against anything in the well just for taste and storage and um, you'll see that the water comes out crystal clear. Actually, I've seen it. I just wanted to drink it. <laughs> so um, let's get into cleaning uh, these tanks and preparing them for storage. Hey everyone, I'm Joel here with the second DIY and today we are going to go over water storage, how to clean these tanks and uh, how to prepare for long term water storage. Uh, you're going to need some Dawn dish soap, uh, a cup, a measuring cup, you do about a quart for the bleach phase of cleaning and we're just going to put a little bit of this in. This is a half a teaspoon but you'll need one teaspoon of bleach for the cleaning part, an RV filter. and a food grade or potable water grade hose. All right, let's keep this clean, get it out of the way. Let's get started. All right, so for this portion of the cleaning process, is just gonna add a little bit of Dawn dish soap. Uh, you don't have to add a lot. If you add too much, it's really gonna be a pain in the butt. You really just wanna fill the bottom of the tank with about I would say two quarts of water and once that's all like uh, soaked up you're gonna just roll them around on their back basically make sure that all the water makes contact with the surface inside and then after that's done you're just gonna keep rinsing it out until you get no more suds uh, this can be annoying because at the top and the bottom of these uh, the, the spigot at the bottom is tough to get all the water out that way of course it'll help and I was just so, I, I just picked it up and just kept pushing it out the top, just shaking the whole barrel. And then that was the way that I dealt with this portion of the video. So again, you just wanna um, get a, a soap it up inside, make all contact. This is really gonna cut down with that new plastic smell. The, you know, these things are gonna come in and uh, have quite a bit of that uh, fresh, fresh water barrel scent so you're just doing that to kind of cut that down on that smell and obviously you know wash uh, the surface of any contaminants any um, you know thicker contaminants any loose plastics things like that and just give it a good wash and that should sort out that then the next part of this we're going to um, do the the bleach step which is about a quart or 34 ounces of water to one cap of bleach and that cap is going to be one tablespoon. So you wanna pay attention to that. And of course, you can see that we are losing daylight here. Um, we, uh, you see me filling up uh, one. So this looks like I put two in, but I actually have uh, half a tablespoon. And I just put two in to make one tablespoon. Uh, again, same procedure here is you're just going to make sure that the bleach coats all surfaces. And then you're going to want to get out as much of that as possible. Uh, now I'm on well water. You could technically rinse this 
uh, if it was on city water because city water is treated um, I'm on well water so I can reintroduce contaminants and since we're going to be sterilizing it anyways if you're really concerned about the bleach because you can't get it completely dry usually let them air dry something like that so the existing bleach doesn't um, kind of cross contaminate or overdo it on the new set of essentially sterilization that you're going to do for the long-term storage so something to consider because you can get a strong smell and if you do you just uh you can either deal with the smell or um, and that smell being a strong bleach smell obviously it's reacting there's a chemical reaction and that's something you want to pay attention to with your storage tanks because you might have to flush them out and start over Now, earlier you heard me bring up a tray. So this is a drain tray that I believe it's used for, you know, water heaters and things like that in case they um, were to burst or anything like that. And then you see I have a little device there, a little alarm in case it does do that. Now, you can hook these up with a drain system. Um, not Well, you can cut holes and, and make your own drain system, hook them up to a pump. We didn't do that. This is flat to the surface of the concrete. And then of course we have those cinder blocks there and I actually add more paper here. I tried cutting it out to the size of the actual barrels. I'm just doing this to act as a buffer between the concrete. You can obviously use different uh, materials. Uh, I went with paper. A lot of people were using two by fours and wood and I didn't want to add these cinder blocks and then on top of that have additional like wood. And I, I just had a concern with them toppling over, especially being near the oil tank. Uh, I didn't want any breakage. Now here you just show, I'm just showing you the filter system that it's going to be going through. That filter system, of course, goes to the, the spigot. Um, a lot of people don't understand why I did that. That wasn't by choice. That was just the way the well company put it in. So my exterior water is filtered. Um, so not ideal. But we're going to add this RV filter. We're going to run it for an additional... Uh, well, we're gonna for several minutes just to make sure that it, the new filter is flush and primed And then we're going to add our potable water grade hose so we can fill the tanks and make sure that um, We're getting the cleanest uh, least chemical in, Interacted with water into these tanks because of course we're going to be drinking it and we want that water to be Tasty and awesome and not something we have to choke down or worry about all right, and this is just me filling the bottom tank, and then of course um, we're gonna fill the second tank. But this is just the way it looks inside. That water looks like you could drink right now, which of course you can. And this is me just messing around with the top tank, just seeing how it fits. It's loose for some reason, and I don't understand this. I kind of thought they would snap in, and they're just really loose, kind of haphazardly sitting there, and they really use the weight of the water to keep them in place. Something I'm not really too thrilled about. I mean, with in, with today's 3D technology, they really shouldn't be able to just snap in. But um, obviously, that was not the case here. Now, this is the part A and B. Um, you can see that's the front. And uh, in the back here, you're going to see the five-gallon intervals, one teaspoon. That's teaspoon part A and B. Uh, if you're doing 55 gallons, you're going to need 11 of those. So this is me just mixing them. Uh, once you've mixed these together, so I have two cups there. I actually just put them into the red cup. So I do 11 of the part A and then 11 of the part B. Um, swish them around a bit and make sure it sits for five minutes. And after that point, I introduce them into each of the barrels. Now, obviously, I've already pre-mixed for the bottom one. And you just this is me doing the, the final step. Now, um, I am getting a strong odor, so I'm guessing that when I use the bleach to coat all sides, I didn't get all of it out, and I'm having some type of either a chemical reaction. Um, there's just something that is wrong with it, and I'm getting uh, a bleach smell. Obviously, uh, strong bleach smells, it, it could mean, or chlorine smell, there could be contaminants in the water. And a lot of times, um, if there's contaminants in the water and you get that chlorine smell, that's the smell that you get with the chemical reaction where it's annihilating or organic matter. Um, so there could be contaminants in there and it's just something that I'm gonna have to obviously use that RV filter for if I wanna filter that out and I wanna keep it. Um, but it's something that I would switch out 
and just be better safe than sorry. All right, guys. So that was my how-to on how to clean and prepare your water storage tanks for long-term storage up to five years using a Part A and Part B aquamarine um, chlorine and acid solution. That acid solution should be mixed prior to putting the, being put into these tanks. And once put into these tanks, um, they say that it is safe to drink after 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, larger tanks for the 30 minutes, smaller tanks for the 15 minutes. So we're going to go with 30 minutes on this one. Um, I am getting a strong odor. I'm getting a strong chlorine smell. So the forums that I'm reading, some people have just said, yeah, that's well water. It's going to stink. There's always stuff in well water. It's always going to react with well water. It should be safe to drink. You're just not going to like the taste. Um, obviously, I'm going to hook up a RV filter that we showed you earlier in the video to this, if that's going to be the case. Other people are concerned. They say it shouldn't be doing that. Um, once I add the Part A and B solution, I will get that chlorine smell initially, um, but others said that once it is mixed and inside, I shouldn't be getting such a pungent odor. And it's pungent. It's pretty strong. Like, it smells like pure chlorine. So um, that is something I'm concerned about. So I am going to flush these tanks out. Again, I'm on a well. Some people say that's just the name of the game, that it is safe to drink. But because I'm new to this, and I'm actually new to these tanks, and I've never uh, experienced that before, I'm, as a precaution, going to drain everything out. Guys, with your own water storage tanks, you want to make sure that if you are unsure of the water, when in doubt, throw it out. But with water, when in doubt, retreat it, filter it, use UV lighting, make sure that it is safe to drink. You don't want to be using these, these uh, backup systems only for them to make you sick in a time that you need them the most and you may not be able to get to a hospital or something that you need. So again, even though you know that they're, they're safe, um, if you're ever in doubt about it, better safe than sorry, have extra filtration options, utilize the Berkey filter system, the Life Straw system, and of course any type of UV light, anything like that. And uh, if you're still unsure about it, um, you can always boil the water. Guys, I'm Joel with Dissecting DIY. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, if you have dealt with water storage before, have any pointers for me, any errors that I might have um, made, leave it in the comments and we can always come back and address those. Um, and of course, uh, if you really like the video, give, give me a subscription. That would be fantastic because it really does help the channel. All right, you have a good day.